Hello, welcome back to Retro Break. In this video, I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about this amazing device here, the EverDrive X7 for the Game Boy. Enjoy. So first of all, what is the EverDrive? The EverDrive is basically a cartridge that lets you plug a micro SD card into the top and play any Game Boy or Game Boy Color games, in this case, that you find online that you can put in here and play on the original system. The version I've got here is called the X7, so there's three different versions of the Game Boy EverDrive. There's the X3 version, which is the most basic one, that's literally just for playing the games that you want to play. There's the X5 version of the EverDrive, which actually lets you reboot back to the EverDrive menu without switching the system on and off, and I think it improves game save slightly. And then there's the version I've got here, the X7, which includes a save state feature, and if you don't know what save states are, they basically take a snapshot of where you're at in the game and say if you die a bit later on you can restore back to that save point. So it's a really handy feature to have. And the other thing that the X7 has that the other two versions don't is it also includes a real time clock. Which is great for games like Pokemon or Harvest Moon where you actually use a real timer in the game to do certain in game events. So that's why I went for the X7 version. It is more expensive than the other two and I'll get to pricing a bit later on in the video. So let's start now by taking a look at how to set this thing up and taking a look at the kind of SD cards that are compatible with the system and how to actually get your games onto the EverDrive. So the first thing you need to do is put the micro SD card into the computer and make sure that it's formatted to a FAT32 file system. Usually by default they are this but you might just want to check beforehand. The second thing you need to do is go to the Crix website I'll put a link in the description and download the firmware that I'm showing here. It's really simple to do, you just download that file and then drag that onto the SD card. And now you've got that, you want to eject the SD card and put it into the EverDrive and turn it on using the Game Boy of your choice. It'll ask you to reset to default, so just press any key on there and then when you put it back in the computer you'll notice it's made a few extra folders and files there won't be anything in them yet, but this means that it's set up and ready to go. So now you can set up your own folder and drag in any of the ROMs that you've got. As you can see, I've got a list of games here, and it's super simple. You just drag it over into your games folder on the SD card, and then you can boot it up in the Game Boy Advance or the original Game Boy and play any of the games that you put on there. There's also a button in the actual cartridge itself, so if you squeeze the cartridge it comes up with that menu that you just saw there, and you can use that for accessing your save states, or you can reset back to the menu and choose a different game. So hopefully that was all pretty straightforward, now let's take a look at some of the homebrew games that I've managed to find for the system. There's a fantastic website I've found called gbhh.com, the Game Boy Homebrew Hub, and as you can see, there's 30 something pages full of homebrew games for the original Game Boy. There's so much good stuff on this site, I've picked out just a few to show you now. So I hope you enjoyed that quick look at a few of the homebrew games that I've found for the machine. I did do a video last week on five of the best homebrew games that I've found for it, so definitely go and watch that video if you're interested in seeing some more homebrew games running on the Game Boy. I'll put a link to that in the description, and in the future I'm going to be doing another one of those videos covering some Game Boy Color games as well, so look forward to that one. No, you're not seeing things. That is Roll in Mega Man 1. Welcome to the amazing world of Game Boy ROM hacks. This is another thing that's really exciting about the EverDrive. If you go to a website called romhacking.net, you can actually download something called an IPS patch, which is basically a patch that you can apply to an original Game Boy ROM that turns it into something else. 
As you can see on the website, there's hundreds of different patches that you can apply, and there's some really cool things. There's little things, like little graphical changes, like you just saw there, and there's color-enhanced games. There's a really amazing color-enhanced version of Mario Land and Mario Land 2, which I'll show a bit later on in the video. And then there's ROM hacks that completely take the base game and turn it into a brand new experience, like they did with Pokemon Prism. So I'll just show you now how to apply the IPS patch. So first of all, you want to download it from the ROM hacking website and then drag the patch file onto the SD card and make a new folder for it wherever you want it to be stored. I've made a folder here called ROM hacks. So as you can see, I just extracted the file and it's put it in its own folder up there so we can delete that raw file, open this up and you can see this one has two different IPS files here. And to know which sort of ROM you need for the IPS file, if you have a look on the site, it'll actually tell you the exact name of the ROM that you need. I can't tell you exactly how you get to the ROMs. I'll have to leave that up to you to find out. But when you do have it, you'll need to download something else now called Multipatch, which is an IPS patching tool. So you can download that and it gives you three different boxes to fill out here. The first one is the location of the IPS patch file. So navigate to that and double click on it to store it in the first box there. And the second box is the actual game that you're patching. So once again, navigate to where the game is, the actual ROM for the game. And then the third box here, this is what you want that new patched file to be called. So I've called this one Rollchan World Patch 1. And you press save, and then you can see it will just pop up as a third file for the game there. So navigate back to the folder press save and it says patch completed and there you can see there's the other file there and then when you're done with these you can just copy these back into your games folder and delete all the IPS stuff and then just load it up on the EverDrive and away you go it really is that simple and I've found so many amazing ROM hacks I'm just going to show a few of them now And as well as ROM hacks, there's one other really cool thing that you can do, and that is apply translation patches. You apply them in the exact same way that I just applied the ROM hack there, but this one actually translates some Japanese games into English, and there is an ever-growing community of translators for old games, which is fantastic to see. As you can see here, one of the games I was very excited to play was the Japan-only game Pokemon Trading Card Game 2, and I've been really enjoying that with the translation patch. So one of the things that I was a little bit worried about before I got the EverDrive was the fact that apparently it's not 100% compatible with Game Boy Pocket and the first time I turned it on it didn't actually work but since putting some games on the EverDrive it did actually work in the Game Boy Pocket so if you do only have a Game Boy Pocket and you're thinking about getting one at least from what I've seen so far it seems to be okay I heard there's some power issues so maybe the batteries will drain a bit faster than normal but I can say that it definitely does work in a Game Boy Pocket. Whether it works 100% of the time, I'm not entirely sure. And I've also tried it on every other system that I've got that can play Game Boy games, including the Super Boy with the Super Game Boy attached to it, and it works flawlessly in all of them. Of course, if you want to play Game Boy Color games, you need to play it in a Game Boy system that's actually compatible with Game Boy Color. So that includes things like the Game Boy Color itself, all the Game Boy Advance models, and the GameCube with the Game Boy Player. The only system I couldn't get the EverDrive Game Boy to work on is the Retro Freak. As you can see, it comes up as an unknown game, and when you try to play it, it just shows up as a black box with a white border around it. 
And another thing that this supports, which I really love, is that it supports Super Game Boy. So if you play it in the Super Game Boy for the SNES, if you're playing any games that have Super Game Boy compatibility, they'll work perfectly fine on this EverDrive. So I'm really happy about that. And there's also one other type of game that I was very, very excited to give a try with the EverDrive, and that is unreleased games. That the developers have actually put the source code for them out there on the internet, and you can actually download some games that were never meant to see the light of day and play them on the actual system they were designed for, which is just really exciting. So take a look at a few of these now, and I will be doing a full video on a few more of them in the future, so enjoy. Now this is really exciting. This was the original demo of Pokemon Gold and Silver when it was first shown off at Space World 1997. And if you actually play through this game, you can see a lot of Pokemon that never made it into the final version of the game. It's really interesting to play through. There's also a really good website online which has dug into the code for this ROM and found so much unused stuff. It's really interesting. I'll put a link to that in the description. And the second game here, this one's called Infinity. And this is another really interesting case of a game that was almost complete but at the time, the game developers couldn't find a publisher for the game. And since 1999 to 2016, this game was presumed dead. The developers had given up on it, but no, there was a blog post in 2016, and apparently they'd been working on the game in the background to get it to a playable state and release it to the public, which is what I've been playing here. It looks like a really, really good game with a really interesting story and a really cool mix of real-time and turn-based battles. It's such a shame that it never got picked up by a publisher, and this version here isn't 100% playable, which is a bit of a shame, but the developers did say they might be going back to it to fix up some of the bugs that are in the game and bring out the completed game in a few years' time. So fingers crossed that actually happens, because as you can see from this video, it does look like a really, really cool game. This one here, this was a game that some developers took to E3 to try and find a publisher, but I think it's fair to say that the publishers were probably quite right to pass this one up. So now let's take a look at how cheats work on the system. So applying cheats to your games using the EverDrive is actually really simple. All you need to do is Google some cheat codes for the game of your choice and copy them into a text file. You can also make a cheats folder on the EverDrive to make this a bit easier to navigate to. So you copy the cheats into the text file, save it as the name of the game or whatever you want to call it, that's just to help you find it a bit later on. Press save, uh, move it into the folder of your choice, make sure the file type is .txt. So you can see there I had to change it to a text file. And then that's literally all you need to do. So then you eject the SD card, and when you go to load up the game, instead of clicking Select and Start, you can either click Cheats and type the cheats in manually, or if you select uh, Select Only, then you can navigate to the Cheats folder that you set up earlier and find the text file for your game. And you can see there that it's actually got the cheat codes already in the file. So click Yes when it says Apply Cheats, and then navigate back to the game and start the game up and then you'll see that the cheats have been applied instantly and it works as simple as that. So now I can finally finish Operation C. So as for pricing, here's the difference between the three different versions of the EverDrive. The EverDrive X3 retails for around £50 it's here for £51.99 on Amazon. The X5 retails for £75, and the one I've got here, the EverDrive X7, is £111. But I do think it's worth it to get the higher end model, because for me personally, I've really been enjoying the save states feature, especially for if I only have a few minutes and I just want to try a game out and go back to it at a later time. It's so useful just being able to take a snapshot of where you're at and come back to it and carry on straight from where you left off. So I'd personally recommend 
the X7 version if you've got the money to spare. If you think the EverDrive Game Boy is a little bit expensive, don't worry, there are some alternatives. I haven't actually tried this out, so I can't actually tell you whether it's any good or not, but the reviews seem to say it's pretty good. And the main alternative that I found is one called the Benven El Cheapo SD. And I'll put a link to that in the description as well if you want to go and track one of these down. And if you do get one, let me know in the comments what you think of it. And they're about $50, so I think that's about 30 quid in UK money. Maybe less because of all the stuff that's going on with Brexit. So if you want to pick one of these up, maybe it's best to wait a little bit for the pound to, you know, gain a bit more value. But it's there as an alternative if you uh, don't want to spend the money on an EverDrive. So there we go guys, thank you so much for watching. That was everything I could think of that I needed to cover for the EverDrive on the Game Boy. If there's anything I didn't cover in the video, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer your questions. So thank you as always so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week for another episode. Goodbye.